it's Wednesday night, it's eight o'clock, it's time for the quiz. Hello everyone, hello, good evening. I hope you're all keeping well, keeping safe and uh, staying connected. Lovely to have you all online with us this evening. Um, yeah, had about 17 people take it, 17 teams last week, already up to 31 this week, which is fantastic. Lovely to have you with us. And um, yeah, so here we are, going to be running a quiz to you this evening, hopefully while away uh, an hour or so, hopefully keep you entertained and work the old, uh, the old grey cells. Um, so where do we start? So I'm going to be doing uh, some rounds, going to be bringing the questions up on the screen for you, as well as me speaking the questions out so that if my, uh, my voice or any of this starts, you know, going glitchy, you've still got the questions there in front of you. Um, right, a couple of things before we begin. I had some feedback uh, from last time, just a couple of things. There was some concern over uh, my alcohol consumption last time. Um, I basically drank uh, an entire bottle of Campo Viejo Rioja uh, Extra Reserve 2014 during the course of running the quiz. And um, some people said, is that the kind of message you need to be giving out in the current climate? Um, or some might say that. Some also might say that that's exactly the kind of message you should be giving out in the current climate. So anyway, look, I've come to a compromise. I thought the safest thing to drink tonight would be Stella. So I'm on the Stella. Cheers. Oh, that reminds me as well. There was also some feedback about the uh, how loudly I was drinking on the stream because the mic's live the whole time. Somebody uh, texted me to say it sounded like a, a drain being unblocked. So um, I'll try and drink a little bit quieter this time. Um, great. Yeah. So rules, 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 rules. It's going to be five rounds, eight questions in each round. So that's uh, 40 points, 40 points maximum score. You, uh, you mark your own papers on this one. I don't have the capacity to be able to mark all the papers myself. So mark your own papers on this one and then share them with your friends or um, relatives or whoever you're playing against. Um, obviously, it's for fun. Um, I'm going to trust you to mark your own papers. Also going to trust you not to cheat or to look up Wikipedia or whatever. Uh, but please do use your, you know, I know a lot of people using their phones, laptops, TVs, and they're staying in touch with people um, through that way. So, yeah. Five rounds, eight questions in each round. We're up to about 42 now, which is great. Um, yeah, one thing you need to know about tonight's quiz. There is one question, because it's April the 1st and it's April Fool's Day and blah, blah, blah. There is one question uh, this week that is a joker question, okay? There's a joker in the pack, which means the answer to that question is going to be a little unconventional. You're going to have to think a little bit outside the box. It might not be the usual answer that you give. But if you get it right you get two points for the answer for that question, okay? So keep your eye for the joker question, and we'll see anyone joining the quiz late won't know about that. So anyway, it's good to be on time. Should we get started? Well, before we do get started, I've got a couple of, sh I've got three shout outs to start. First of all, massive shout out to Danny and Jane in Corringham. Big shout out, greetings, hope you're keeping well and safe. Also, big shout out to Mr. Reese Jones. God bless you, sir. And uh, shout out to the Manchester crew, headed up by Al Bellis. Nice to have you with us. Let's go. Round one. Here we go. Television. Question one. Which of these sitcom apartments has the fewest bedrooms? Which one of these sitcom apartments has the fewest bedrooms? Frasers, Monica's or Del Boy's? Frasers, Monikers, or Del Boys? Next up. Number two. What did the million pound drop change its name to when it moved to daytime TV? What did the million pound drop change its name to when it moved to daytime TV? Question three, what does the W on this character's hat stand for? What does the W on this character's hat stand for?
Question four. Which of these is a genuine TV detective duo? Merlot and Carver? Lemon and Lime? Sage and Onion? Or Burger and Chips? Which of those is a genuine TV detective duo? Merlot and Carver? Lemon and Lime? Sage and Onion? Or Burger and Chips? Number five, which current Netflix series has the tagline, murder, mayhem, and madness? Which current Netflix series has the tagline, murder, mayhem, and madness? Number six, who does Emma Corrin play? in this current series of The Crown. Who does Emma Corrin play in the current series of The Crown? Number seven. Which TV star famously attacked, amongst others, Larry Grayson, John Noakes, Michael Aspel, Stan Boardman, Ronnie Corbett, Johnny Carson, and Michael Parkinson. Which TV star famously attacked, among others, Larry Grayson, John Noakes, Michael Aspel, Stan Boardman, Ronnie Corbett, Johnny Carson, and Michael Parkinson? Big shout out to Johnny Angelidis who's playing in South Africa this evening. Finally, question eight. By what title are Judy Scheindlin and Janine Pirro known as on TV? By what title are Judy Scheindlin and Janine Pirro known as on TV? So as it's the first round, we've still got people joining us. I'll just go through those again very quickly for you. Uh, which of these sitcom apartments has the fewest bedrooms, Frasers, Monikers, or Del Boyds? What did the Million Pound Drop change its name to when it moved to daytime TV? Number three, what does the W on this character's hat stand for? Four, which of these is a genuine TV Detective duo, Merlot and Carver, Lemon and Lime, Sage and Onion, or Burger and Chips? Which current Netflix series has the tagline, Murder, Mayhem and Madness? Who does Emma Corrin play in the current series of The Crown? Which TV star famously attacked, among others, Larry Grayson, John Noakes, Michael Aspel, Stan Borman, Ronnie Corbett, Johnny Carson and Michael Parkinson? And by what name are Judy Scheindlin and Janine Pirro known as? On TV. So let's go to the answers on the TV quiz. Here we go. Which of these sitcom apartments has the fewest bedrooms? It is Monica's. Monica from Friends' apartment has two bedrooms, both of the others have three. Question two. What did the million pound drop change its name to when it moved to daytime TV? It became known as the 100k pound drop. The 100, I'm not 100% sure how you'd pronounce that. And I suppose it depends on how, uh, how precisely you're marking your particular quiz, but quizzes, but uh, the 100k drop. What does the W on this character's hat stand for? Warden, air raid warden, I guess, from Dad's Army. Next up, which of these is a genuine TV detective duo? Merlot and Carver, Lemon and Lime, Sage and Onion, or Burger and Chips? Very well done if you said that that was the Joker question. The answer is none of them are, although they all sound like they'd be great. I'd be interesting to know if 
And if you did choose any of them, which one you chose? Which current Netflix series has the tagline Murder, Mayhem and Madness? Tiger King? Who does Emma Corrin play in the current series of The Crown? She plays Princess Diana. Which TV star famously attacked, among others, Larry Grayson, John Noakes, Michael Aspel, Stan Boardman, Ronnie Corbett, Johnny Carson, and Michael Parkinson? That is Rod Hull and Emu, I guess. Rod Hull and Emu. Um, I put a little film together, a little montage of them attacking people. Let's see if this works. The last time in this series. <laughs> Stop it! Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was um, Stan Boardman gets it the worst there. He gets right up his anyway. Um, yeah, it's the sort of act you wouldn't really get away with these days, is it? Um, and finally, uh, by what title are Judy Scheindling and Janine Pirro known as on TV? Well, they are both known as judges, Judge Janine and Judge Judy. So they're the answers for the TV round. Um, yeah, so I've just got a quick question to ask in between the rounds here about sort of how to deal with things in the current scenario. I'm going to the supermarket a little bit at the moment, you know, pick up provisions, and I've decided to wear gloves for my own safety. But unfortunately, the only gloves I've got are these, um, these red cotton gloves, guide gloves. Don't ask me, it's a long story where I got them from, but they make me look a bit, they make me look a bit mad when I'm, when I'm going around the supermarket picking up tins of beans. So I'm just wondering what your solution to this is about whether you're, um, you know, do you go surgical gloves? Do you go marigolds? Do you go ski gloves? Or do you go uh, bareback and rely on the soap? I don't know. Um, let me know. I'm interested to know. OK, uh, let's get on with the quiz, shall we? Round two. Geography B. So geography B. Now, um, very simple. All the answers begin with B. Let's go. Number one. In which UK town would you find this building? In which UK town would you find this building? The porters have just texted in to say they go naked with soap. Um, I'm hoping that's in response to the gloves question. Apparently Susie went for burger and chips as a detective duo. And I can see uh, Electra Diva 170 went for Merlot and Carver. The Delgados went Merlot and Carver as well. I'd love to see that show. Number two, on which body of water does the port of La Rochelle stand? Which body of water does the port of La Rochelle stand? Number three, which landmark is depicted on the reverse of German 10, 20 and 50 cent coins? Which landmark is depicted on the reverse of German 10, 20 and 50 cent coins? Question four. What's the name of this dog immortalised by this statue in Edinburgh? So what's the name of the dog immortalised by this statue in Edinburgh? So the B bit that I'm looking for is, is the name of the dog. It's known by a slightly longer phrase. But it's the, the name of the dog that I'm actually after.
Somebody went sage and onion. Number five, which European country's flag is this? Which European country's flag is this? Shout out to the St. George's crew. Next up, this one's for, uh, for Johnny. South Africa has three capital cities. Which one is first alphabetically? South Africa has three capital cities. Which one is first alphabetically? Really hope I got the research on this one right. Next up, which of these towns in Northwest England has the largest population? Bolton, Burnley, Blackburn, or Blackpool? Bolton, Burnley, Blackburn, or Blackpool? Number eight, what's the capital of the Australian state of Queenland, Queensland? What's the capital of the Australian state of Queensland? Right, let's go to the answers for Geography B. In which UK town would you find this building? That is the Brighton Pavilion. Question two, on which body of water does the port of La Rochelle stand? Well, any of you that, like me, tried to learn French in the 80s using the Tricolor books will be very familiar with the town of La Rochelle and it stands on the Bay of Biscay. Which landmark is depicted on the reverse of German 10, 20 and 50 cent coins? That is the Brandenburg Gate. What's the name of the dog immortalized by this statue in Edinburgh? The name of the dog is Bobby. That's known as Greyfriars Bobby guarded the, uh, the grave of his owner, who was buried in Greyfriars Grave uh, Cemetery. Which European country's flag is this? That's Bosnia and Herzegovina. I think that's spelled right. South Africa has three capital cities, which is the first alphabetically. That's Bloemfontein. Which of these towns in Northwest England has the largest population? Bolton, Burnley, Blackburn. Blackpool, it's close, but it's Blackpool. Number eight, what's the capital of the Australian state of Queensland? Brisbane. So that's geography. Just going to do a little advert at this point of the quiz, as well as doing the pub quiz on um, on Wednesday nights. I also do a, uh, a family quiz at the weekends on Sunday. There's one coming up this Sunday. It's going to be live at 3 p.m. Sunday, the 5th of April. It's more of a family quiz, more aimed sort of for the kids, but with help from the uh, from the grown ups as well. Did that last week. Yeah, proved very popular. Um, plenty of listeners for that or watchers. So uh, tune in, yeah, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Mark Norris quiz. So it's on this channel. You'll be able to find it if you just come out of this video and onto the channel. So let's go to next round, film. Film I. So 
All the answers in this round um, begin with the letter I. I'm going to give you uh, the name of an actor or an actress. I'm going to give you the name of the parts they play. And then you just have to give me the name of a film in which they play that particular part. Here we go. Leonardo DiCaprio plays somebody called Cobb in which movie? Leonardo DiCaprio plays Cobb in which movie? They all begin with I. Number two, Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts. Gwyneth Paltrow plays Pepper Potts. Name any film in which she plays that character. Rob has just texted in to say he kissed Bobby in Edinburgh last year. Um, well, thank you for that, Rob. Um, hopefully it's, uh, that's to do with the quiz and to do with Greyfriars Bobby. Uh, but even if it's not, that's great news. Let's go to the next one. James Stewart, Jimmy Stewart as George Bailey. Jimmy Stewart as George Bailey. What film beginning with I does he play that character in? Shout out to Alex and Tom in Gosport, getting on it. Number four, Will Smith plays Robert Neville in which film? Will Smith as Robert Neville. Benedict Cumberbatch was a character called Alan Turing. Benedict Cumberbatch plays Alan Turing in which film? Amy Poehler, is that how you say it? Poehler? I guess so. Amy Poehler as Joy in which film beginning with I? Shout out to Eileen and Catherine in Billericay. Number seven. Christoph Waltz plays a character called Colonel Hans Lander in which film? Christoph Waltz plays Hans Lander in which film? Finally, Meryl Streep plays a character called Margaret Thatcher in which film? So I'll just run through those one more time. Just had a couple of requests for repeated readings of the questions. So Leah DiCaprio as Cobb, Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts, James Stewart as George Bailey, Will Smith as Robert Neville, and Dick Cumberbatch as Alan Turing, Amy Poehler as Joy, Christoph Waltz as Hans Lander, Meryl Streep as Margaret Thatcher. So 
So let's go to the answers. Leonardo DiCaprio played a character called Cobb in the film Inception. Gwyneth Paltrow played Pepper Potts. Now you could have had Iron Man 1, 2 or 3. Possibly accept Infinity War, but the uh, the full title is Avengers colon Infinity War. I mean, the colon is the uh, the punctuation mark, not an act. No, I don't even want to get into that discussion. Um, James Stewart as George Bailey. It's, it's a Wonderful Life. Will Smith as Robert Neville. Now. There's at least three films that Will Smith's been in that begin with the letter I. So if you said Independence Day, you were wrong. If you said I, Robot, you were wrong. It's I Am Legend. Benedict Cumberbatch as Alan Turing. The Imitation Game. You don't really include the the. The Imitation Game. Amy Poehler as Joy. Amy Poehler as Joy. That's in the film Inside Out. Christoph Waltz as Colonel Hans Lander. Fantastic performance in Inglorious Bastards. Meryl Streep as Margaret Thatcher in the Iron Lady. So that's the film round. Everything going well with you, I hope. Let's go to our next quiz. Music questions, music questions. I might give you a little bit longer on each question for this one because you have to uh, probably think and sing a little bit to yourselves. Um, each of the, uh, I'm going to ask for the title of the song, but the title of each of these songs is a question. The title of each song is a question. What is the question? I'm going to give you the first line of the song. So Rod Stewart sang a song which began with the following line. She sits alone waiting for suggestions. She sits alone waiting for suggestions. So which song by Rod Stewart? The title is a question, has that as its first line. Whitney Houston did a song, first line. There's a boy I know, he's the one I dream of. There's a boy I know, he's the one I dream of. The Black Eyed Peas. First line of this particular song. What's wrong with the world, mama? People acting like they got no mamas. Fantastic lyric writing there. Genius rhyming the word mama with the word mamas. Now, I don't have a way of um, playing the songs yet with the technology that I've got through the computer. Well, I say I don't have a way. There is a way. I just haven't found out how to do it yet. Um, would you rather that I sung the chorus of each song or that I just told you what the song title is? So I'll just put that out there. I'll get a sort of a straw poll and um, we'll see what it is that you want as an audience. Let's go to the next one. The Bee Gees. I know your eyes in the morning sun. 
I know your eyes in the morning sun. Which song, the title of which is a question, has that as its first line? Number five, the three degrees. Who ha, ha who, precious moments. Who ha, ha who, <laughs> precious moments. <laughs> it sounds a little bit like a line that Al Pacino would deliver in a film. Number six. Lenny Kravitz. I was born long ago. I am the chosen. I'm the one. I have come to save the day and I won't leave until I'm done. I had a bit of feedback about the answers and it looks like I'm singing. Shout out for Lorraine, Steve and Hannah. It wouldn't be a pub quiz without a question that features four non-blondes. 25 years of my life and still, I'm trying to get up that great big hill of hope for a destination. Finally, number eight, the Pussycat Dolls. I know you like me. I know you do. That's why whenever I come round, she's all over you. I know you like me. I know you do. That's why whenever I come round, she's all over you. And I think to myself that offering to sing is an incredibly bad idea. I just need to prepare, hold on. There we go. Right, answers. Oh dear God, here we go. <clears throat> right, Rod Stewart. Oh dear, really? Okay, <clears throat> she sits alone. This is an awful, uh, this is an awful idea. She sits alone, waiting for suggestions. So that's, do you think I'm sexy? And you, so do you think I'm sexy is the answer to that one. God, there are seven more to go. Okay, Whitney Houston. There's a boy, I know, he's the one I dream of. That's, um. How will I know if he really loves me? I say a prayer with... That's a banger, that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, Black Eyed Peas. Oh, God. Okay. What's wrong with the world, mama? People acting like they ain't got no mamas. That's where is the love? Oh, God, that's even more difficult. It's a different person that sings that bit than does the rap at the beginning. Where is the love is the answer to that one. Um, I'm, I'm losing viewers. Okay, let's get through these quick. Okay, the B. I know your eyes in the morning sun. How deep is your love? Is the answer to that one. I need to work out how the music works on, the, on, on this system. Oh my God. Okay, three degrees. Um, who are, are who? Precious moments. That's when will I see you again? Okay, when will I see you again? Three, that's a good song as well. Uh, God knows it. Lenny Kravitz. I was born long ago. I'm the chosen one. I'm the, well, you get the general idea. Are you going to go my way? By Lenny Kravitz. 
And then, oh, dear, this, it gets harder. Four non-blondes. Um, okay. Uh, 25 years of my life and still I'm trying to get up that great big hill of hope for a destination. And I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, what's going on? What's up is the answer to that one. What's up? Not what's going on. That's a Marvin Gaye song. I know you like me. I know you do. That's why whenever I come round, she's all over you. It goes nothing like that. That's don't you. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me, etc. Right, let's come to the end of that. Um, Funny enough, I've gained three viewers. I don't know how that's happened, but uh, anyway, thank you for hanging in there with me. Uh, that's the end of the music round. Very well done to you all. Um, right, final round of the quiz. My goodness, it's come round quick. Final round. Um, what's next now? Hmm. Let's come back to me for a second here. So last week, I did a kind of a connections round. It was based loosely around Only Connect. That, you know that, that TV quiz show, and I had a bit of feedback about it, and um, people were saying it was it was too dense, it was too hard for a, a pub quiz that you have to get the answers to reasonably quickly. So I thought I'd give it another go, but I've changed it up a bit, and I've done it kind of rule of three. So you, you'll see you'll see what I mean. So what's next? I'm going to show you three things or two things, and I just want to know what's third in that sequence. Okay, that's all you got to do. What's third in the sequence? So question one, here we go. What's next? Go, Old Kent Road, blank. Okay, so what goes next? What goes where the question mark is? Right, question two, what's next? Doctor No, from Russia with love, blank. Doctor No, from Russia with love, what's the next one in that series? Right, who's next in this series? Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, blank. Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, blank. Right, what's next here? October 31st, Halloween. November the 1st, All Saints. November the 2nd, blank. October 31st, Halloween. November the 1st, All Saints. November the 2nd, blank. What's next on this this grid this list? Fifty shades of grey, fifty shades darker, blank. What's third on that list? Number six, what's next on this list? 1.5 kilometer swimming, 40 kilometers cycling. What's the last one on that list?
Number seven, what's next on this list? 12, hurricane, 10, storm, eight, what? Finally, come to this list. This is quite an interesting one. It took me ages to research this. Uh, so at the top there, Ian Beale, 35 years. Then Doc Cotton, 30 years, also known as Doc Branning. Who's next on that list at 28 years? So Ian Beale at the top, 35 years, 1985 to the present. Then Doc Cotton, 30 years, 85 to 93, and then 97 to 2020. And then at the bottom, 28 years, 1990 to 2003, and then 2005 to the present. It's just the last round, so I'm going to go back through them again because sometimes I've had a couple of requests just to go through those. So what's next on that, that board there? Go, Old Kent Road, blank. Doctor No from Russia with Love, blank. That's number two. Number three, Gerald Ford. Jimmy Carter, blank. October 31st, Halloween. November 1st, All Saints. November 2nd, blank. That's question four. Number five. Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker, blank. Question six. 1.5K swim, 40 kilometer bike ride, Blank. Shout out to Rich Stevenson. What's next? Number seven, 12 hurricane, 10 storm, eight blank. And finally, Ian Beale, 35 years, Doc Cotton, 30 years, blank, 28 years. Right, let's go to the answers then. So, what's next here? Straightforward enough, it's a Monopoly board, you go to go. Then the Old Kent Road, what's next? Community chest, community chest. What's next in these ones? The uh, first three Bond films, Dr. No, From Russia With Love, Goldfinger. Who's next? Not particularly famous presidents, these, are they? Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. What's next? Halloween, All Saints, and then November 2nd is All Souls Day. All Souls. Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker, Fifty Shades Freed. Freed, ironically, there's some handcuffs there. What's next? 1.5k swim, 40 kilometer bike ride. It's the 10k run, 10 kilometer run. So this is a triathlon, you probably worked out, but it's the Olympic triathlon. So it's one, the one where the, uh, the Brownlee brothers ran that in the Olympics. It's a 10K run, is the last leg of that particular triathlon. What's next? Hurricane, storm, oh, they sound like gladiators. Uh, the, their wind strengths, number eight is the gale. Their strengths on the, on the Beaufort scale. 
And finally, who's next? Ian Beal, 35 years, Doc Cotton, 30 years. So these are the, uh, the three longest serving characters in EastEnders. Um, not the earliest that they appeared in the soap, but the longest amount of time they've done on screen. 28 years. It's Phil Mitchell, 1990 to 2003, and then 2005 to the present. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, everyone. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I hope you enjoyed the quiz. I hope you got some good marks. So the top mark, uh, it's out of 41 this week. So we've got 40. And then uh, obviously there's that bonus question if you got that joker question right, if you didn't put sage and onion or uh, burgers and chips for that particular one. Um, it's been lovely putting it together this week and lovely uh, putting it out there for you. It's brilliant. 40 viewers this week. It's over twice as many as we had last week. Uh, I'm going to do it again next Wednesday. As I mentioned, this Sunday, live, 3 p.m., Sunday the 5th of April, got a family quiz if you want to get your um, little ones involved. Um, that was great fun last week, so I should look forward to maybe seeing some of you there. And um, I'll be back again this time next week, Wednesday, 8 p.m. If you go onto the channel and subscribe, um, you'll get a little notification, a uh, little reminder about the, uh, the quiz coming up. But yeah, tune in again next week. Um, yeah, I wish you all the best, you know, stay, stay healthy, stay safe, stay connected, look after each other, be kind. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless. See you soon. Bye-bye.